I believe we have in the chat Michael O'Neill um, from a Greenway Forward podcast. Um, Michael, are you here? I am here. Can you hear me? I can hear you, and 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 you look great, and you sound great. Um, and um, <laughs> thanks so much for bearing with us uh, while we dealt with some technical difficulties and got a bit of a backlog. But I'm um, super excited to have you on. So I guess first question, um, you know, tell us a little bit about your podcast. And I'm assuming based on the name of your podcast, that you are passionate about and work on environmental issues. Um, and I would love to um, you know, draw us a connection here. Like we are living in an era of climate catastrophe. Why should people care about net neutrality when like the world is burning? Absolutely. Uh, I'm, my name is Michael O'Neill. The show I produce is called A Green Way Forward. And we live stream on uh, Monday evenings at 8 p.m. And our podcast is at agreenwayforward.org. And I uh, host that show with David Cobb, and we identify as eco-socialist nonviolent revolutionaries. And the dots that we connect between the, uh, the climate crisis, the climate catastrophe, as you put it, and net neutrality is that one, a lot of people wouldn't even know that we're in a climate catastrophe if it weren't for the internet, if it weren't for courageous, independent online voices uh, like Democracy Now!, like Chris Hedges, like Truthout, uh, like um, Matt Taibbi, uh, all kinds of folks whose work I've come to know through their online publishing. And I'm sure there are countless people in the chat and who are watching and who know of countless other sources who have been their gateway to the kind of uh, progressive, uh, radical, important investigative media that is so important to understanding an issue like climate catastrophe when the corporate media is doing everything that they can to ignore it. And even the the DNC, we just heard, is uh, talking about not having a climate change focused debate. And that's supposedly the progressive party within the two party system. So uh, also, uh, in addition to just making people aware about an issue like climate catastrophe, we see, uh, and I say we being eco-socialist, nonviolent revolutionaries and, and Green Party organizers like myself, we see a freer, more modern, more fair internet as being part of a Green New Deal. That when we talk about infrastructure and reinvesting in infrastructure at a, a New Deal scale, it's not just about the renewable energy and it's not just about the bridges and the roads, it should also be about the internet. We should have a world-class free and democratic internet in this country and there's no reason not to. I can keep yeah. going. I'm thrilled <laughs> yeah. to keep going. I'm taking a second uh, to mute myself. That's that's very well said, and um, and I and I I like your self ascribed label, and and yeah, I mean, and I think it's interesting. You know, you mentioned sort of the the two party system, and you know, I mean, one thing that we've just been contending with in this debate is that the telecom lobby has really tried to make this a partisan issue in Washington D.C., uh, even though polls consistently show that the overwhelming majority of voters from across the political spectrum, uh, registered Democrats, registered Republicans, independents, uh, registered Green Party members, um, all overwhelmingly support restoring net neutrality. It's like the one thing that everyone can agree on is I don't want my cable company to tell me which websites I can visit and where I can get news and how I can watch videos. Um, and, and we've certainly seen that the telecom industry is giving donations hand over fist to both Democrats and Republicans to attempt to uh, sort of subvert democracy and get their way. So, you know, as, as an activist and as an organizer, um, you know, how do you suggest, you know, what can we do to counter that corporate influence um, that seems to be corrupting our democracy in this case and preventing us? Uh, you know, here we are, we've got the Save the Internet Act, it passed the House, and now it's stalled in the Senate. What should folks who are out there do uh, to help continue to show their elected officials that this is something that they care about um, and that they're not giving up on? Well, there's a few things. One is we always have to be demanding more. Uh, we can't just settle for the crumbs that the duopoly cartel are willing to toss us. And so net neutrality, I see that as the ground floor. In terms of the existing internet that we have, the for-profit run telecommunications companies that we have, we can't have them actively doling out bandwidth to the highest bidder and silencing voices uh, like we've been talking about all day. Uh, that cannot happen. And so that's why we need net neutrality as the ground floor. And you need to demand that 
of your elected representatives. And even if you are represented at this point by an elected Democrat, don't let them rest on their loyal their laurels. Don't let them be complacent. Let them know that you are watching and that you will fight to get elected whoever is necessary to actually fight for the things that you want. And uh, second, I would say that at the, the level of, of net neutrality with what we've been talking about today, absolutely the site of the battle is the US Senate. And so uh, we have to be you know, fighting to make sure that uh, even if, for instance, uh, if next year, if the Senate goes to the Democratic Party in, as a majority, again, we can't let them rest on their laurels. We've seen this far too many times. I'm witnessing it right now in my home state of New York, where all three branches of our government are uh, the, the, uh, our House, our uh, state Senate, and the governor are all controlled by, by Democrats. And there's this campaign for New York Health to try to establish single payer health care in New York State that's been you know, basically languishing for a decade, waiting for the state Senate to be controlled by Democrats. Well, now it's controlled by Democrats and they still haven't voted it through. There's still a lot of work to be done. And we saw this in, in, in California too. Sorry, I don't mean to get too far from the topic of net neutrality, but I think these parallels are important. So we always have to keep fighting and we have to be always fighting to remove corporate money out of politics to fight for grassroots independent politics. And uh, I believe we need multi-party democracy. And so anything that we can do to expand the voices that we have in our elected government, much like we've been talking about expanding the voices that we have in our media is a good and healthy thing for our democracy. Um, and my final point uh, on this question is that we need to be looking at how in our local governments, how is the, uh, local application of or the actions of internet companies, whether it's uh, Comcast or Spectrum Charter or AT&T, how are they disenfranchising neighborhoods in your communities? How are they letting infrastructure uh, be neglected in low-income communities of color or low-income communities and, and rural communities in general? We have to be fighting for uh, just physical access to the internet uh, in addition to uh, equal access to bandwidth and to online streaming and, and online access in the in infrastructure that we already have. I think that's a really, really important point just to recognize that, you know, this is an issue that affects everyone, but it doesn't affect everyone in the same way. You know, people who are already facing uh, discrimination, who are already uh, facing uh, structural racism and uh, poverty and uh, lack of access to jobs and healthcare and education, um, are only going to be disproportionately disadvantaged by removing these protections. Um, because again, it, it allows for the internet to essentially become more centralized, more corporate controlled, more expensive, and where we're hearing from less perspectives and less voices. Um, and that's really, you know, that again, that affects everyone. Uh, it's a danger to everyone. Um, but for those who are already disadvantaged or marginalized in our society, it's going to hit them even harder. So this really is a fundamental uh, issue of basic human rights, of democracy, uh, and you know, and one that you know, in my opinion, is worth getting out of bed to fight for. Um, so, Michael, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Um, where can folks find you on the internet if they are interested in checking out uh, your podcast and your work? The podcast archive is at agreenwayforward.org, and you can check our live stream from Facebook at uh, Dr. Jill Stein's Facebook page. Uh, David and I both worked on her campaign in 2016, and that's where we live stream from. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Michael E. O'Neill, O-N-E-I-L, and on Twitch, my handle is Cadmus underscore one Z, or Z if you're Canadian, uh, and I've been really enjoying the live stream today, so uh, thank you very much for having me on.